So Chris Saliza is uh, CNN's resident bird brain, as I call him. Um, 98% of the time, he has a take that makes me not only recoil in disgust, but also laugh. So I saw this video pop up um, the other day. What Liz Cheney's political future may hold beyond 2022. So I saw that, and I was like, oh boy, I gotta watch this video. And honestly, I was going into it expecting, like, you know, let me watch it to see how dumb it is, so I can then... Uh, show you guys and rip it um because it seems like he's is liz cheney gonna be the next president of the united states it seems like he's going in that direction because his brain is poisoned from conventional wisdom and liberal elitism um but to my shock to my shock he actually makes a really good point in here that highlights some wheels in motion behind the scenes that are inevitable. I think they're inevitable. So let me, I'll share the theory with you and then we'll talk about it here. This is really interesting and important and it, and it's, it's everything for 2024. So let's watch. So the first time I recorded today's episodes, I didn't wear a microphone, which made the sound less good. Yeah. Whoops. Liz Cheney didn't come. What was the point of putting another video? Come on, man. Nobody's here for your personality. You are not one whose charisma attracts people right out and say she expects to lose her primary next month. But in an interview with CNN's Jake Tapper on Sunday, it was pretty easy to read between the lines of the Wyoming Republicans' answers. I am working hard here in Wyoming to uh, earn every vote. Uh, but, but I will also say this. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm not going to say things that aren't true about the election. My opponents are doing that, certainly simply for the purpose of getting elected. And at another point, she said this. If I have to choose between uh, maintaining a seat in the House of Representatives Uh, or protecting the Constitutional Republic and ensuring the American people know the truth about Donald Trump, uh, I'm going to choose the Constitution and the truth every single day. Now, pressed by Tapper whether her service as vice chair of the House's January 6th Select Committee will have been worth it even if she loses next month, Cheney responded, I believe that my work on this committee uh, is the single most important thing I've ever done professionally. Now, if all that sounds to you like Cheney is framing the August 16th primary as a sort of fait accompli, and as not the end of a story, but as part of a broader narrative, well then you, sir or ma'am, are correct. The simple fact is that Cheney is very unlikely to beat Harriet Hageman in next month's Wyoming primary. Hageman has the support of, among others, former President Donald Trump, as well as a number of top Republican leaders, including House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. Cheney, on the other hand, is detested by Republicans who swear fealty to Trump, and in Wyoming, that's a majority of Republicans. While Cheney has reportedly been trying to recruit Democrats to cross party lines and support her, and some undoubtedly will, it's very hard to see that making a real difference in the outcome of this race. Simply put, Cheney looks- I think that's true because, and you see this too with like Manchin and Cinema, they have like a higher approval rating among Republicans than they, than they do among Democrats. Uh, but are Republicans gonna vote for Manchin and Cinema? No. By the same token, same thing's happening here with Liz Cheney. She has a higher approval rating among Democrats than she does among Republicans because of all the January 6th stuff and how high profile is and how forthright she is with her position on it. But are they actually going to vote for her? A handful, tiny percentage, but not nearly enough to make the difference. So she's kind of expecting to lose at this point. But that's where it gets interesting. Looks likely to lose and lose big. And she knows it. Sidebar. Crazy things happen. Polls can be wrong. It ain't over till it's over and all yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah, to be clear, up. all signs president in 2024. Watch. I haven't really, uh, at this point, I have not made a decision about uh, 2024, but I- So now the media is trying to bolster her and make it a thing of like, are you going to run in 2024? Are you going to take the Republican Party back for the forces of good, which 93% of the time still agree with Trump? That's the media line. So, and that is a very dumb line, but hold your horses. I do think as we look towards the next uh, presidential election, uh, as I said, you know, I believe that our nation stands on the edge of an abyss, and I do believe that we all have to to really think very seriously uh, about the dangers we face and the threats we face, and and we have to elect serious candidates. That pretty much tells you everything you need to know about Liz Cheney in 2024. She isn't an announced candidate yet, but when you hear a politician talking about the country standing on the edge of an abyss and the need to elect serious candidates, well, it doesn't take an astrophysicist, thankfully, to figure out what's really going on here. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. He's trying to say, oh, she's definitely running. 50-50. But even if she doesn't, she has a plan. 
The real question at this point seems to be then not whether Cheney runs, she sounds to all the world like that decision is at least mostly made, but rather whether she can have any sort of actual impact in the 2024 race. If Cheney runs as a Republican, it will undoubtedly be a very tough road for her. Trump is the clear frontrunner in most polling conducted on the 2024 presidential primary and seems very likely to run again. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is seen as the only serious alternative to Trump, at least at the moment, and he's positioned himself as an advocate of Trumpism just without Trump. There's no candidate garnering any serious support in hypothetical 2024 polls who's running expressly against Trump and the actions he took and didn't take during his four years in office. The people, aside from Cheney, who are signaling an interest in running that sort of campaign, term-limited Maryland Governor Larry Hogan is probably the most high-profile example other than Cheney. Hilarious. Larry Hogan's family doesn't even know who he is. They barely register in polls on the race. Could Cheney somehow coalesce the anti-Trump vote within the Republican Party? Sure, possible. But even if she was to do so, there's scant evidence that that block of voters comprise anything close to a majority of likely Republican primary voters. So far, all true. The other and more plausible, I think, path for Cheney is to run as an independent in the 2024 presidential race. Assuming Trump is the Republican nominee, which is a safe assumption, such a candidacy could skim off enough votes in swing states and nationally to potentially hamstring the former president's chances of winning. Presumably. Whoa, We're, that's a serious point right there. Now, if you're still skeptical, I hear you. I hear you, but wait until the thing you hear at the end here from Cheney. Lee Cheney, who is a conservative on most issues other than Donald Trump, would appeal more to Republicans than Democrats in a general election. But even under that scenario, Cheney would function as a spoiler, trying to keep Trump from the White House rather than as a viable candidate to be elected president herself, which, given what she told Tapper Sunday, might be enough for her. I'm fighting hard. Uh, no matter what happens on August 16th, I'm going to wake up on August 17th and continue to fight hard to ensure Donald Trump is never anywhere close to the Oval Office ever again. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, run that back one more time. And again, think of the theory that uh, Saliza just put out there. Enough for her. I'm fighting hard. Uh, no matter what happens on August 16th, I'm going to wake up on August 17th and continue to fight hard to ensure Donald Trump is never anywhere close to the Oval Office ever again. No matter what happens on August 16th, her election, if I win or lose, she's expecting to lose. She very almost certainly is going to lose. Uh, I'll wake up on August 17th and make sure Donald Trump never gets anywhere near the White House again. That's a very strong statement with a lot of conviction. And um, so, look, now let me get to my theory, because Saliza is a little too concrete in his proposal here. He might he might be right. He might be right. But here's what I'm definitely convinced of at this point. If it ain't Liz Cheney, it's going to be some other anti-Trump Democrat or excuse me, anti-Trump Republican running as an independent and then the Republican establishment is going to secretly tweak some of the rules to give that independent a higher vote share. And all that independent would need to do is take 5% away from Trump, assuming he's the nominee, and it guarantees a Democratic victory in 2024. And at this point, I have no doubt, no doubt, that the Republican establishment would rather have almost anybody but Trump because he crossed too many people in there. He did. He crossed too many. They are, and that's why, if you notice, there's no response over the January 6th stuff. None of the elected Republicans are talking about the January 6th stuff. They're not mounting a defense for Trump. Why? Because secretly behind the scenes, they're like, boy, we hope this works to get him out of the conversation, get him out of the national dialogue, take away his chances of being president again because they're all, they all want to be the next guy. They all want to be the president. And he stepped on too many toes. So what, look, what his theory tells me, I think his theory is mostly correct. If it ain't Liz Cheney running as an independent to try to take away 5%, which would guarantee a Democratic victory, it'll be Mike Pence running as an independent or some other anti-Trump uh, Republican that has a high enough profile to try to take away 5%. And they're going to try to sink him no matter what. That's what that tells me. So there is an evil genius, depending on your perspective, or just a genius plan being put into place by the Republican establishment. And because they've decided we're done with Trump, we're done with him. So now here's where the conversation gets a little complicated, though. And Crystal made this point to me when I was talking uh, about this to her. She's not convinced that if Liz Cheney runs as an independent or some other anti-Trump Republican runs as an independent, 
she's not convinced that that candidate would pull more from Republicans than Democrats. I tend to disagree with her. I think it is more, they would pull more from Republicans uh, than they would from Democrats. Because again, I think it's the same thing as like the Mansion and Cinema thing where they have a higher approval rating among Republicans, but would they actually vote for them in, in the final consideration? No. I think it's the same thing. I think, yeah, maybe, you know, Liz Cheney, her, her if she were to run, her vote count would be 20 or 30 percent Democratic, but the overwhelming majority would be Republican, and that would be taking more from Trump and the Republicans, and there'd be consequences to that. So I actually, look, I actually think his theory's correct, but I think he's a little off in the particulars. He's too sure it's definitely going to be Cheney running, um, but they are planning some sort of independent candidate that they'll try to bolster in subtle ways to take out Trump because they're, I think the Republican establishment is done with him. Uh, so we'll see. So in other words, look, he's, I thought he was going to make the argument of like, Liz Cheney's going to run and maybe she'll win. I thought he was that dumb. Nah, he's, he's a lot closer on this one. He's making a decent point on this one. Again, my only disagreement with him is that if it ain't Cheney, it's going to be somebody else and she's going to be involved behind the scenes trying to dot all the I's and cross all the T's to get this person the 5% that they need to have the outcome on the race that they want. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.